What is going on, moto friends? It's time to ride your motorcycle and you step out in your garage, you see your beautiful bike standing there. Can you visually tell if your tire pressure is low before you start riding? Now, I don't have that skill. In the old days, all we had to go by was this little tire pencil gauge. You put this on your valve stem, it would pop out and it would tell you the pressure here in PSI. But nowadays, technology's gotten a whole lot better. And if you've been following my channel, you probably saw my prior tire pressure monitoring system review. Today, I'm going to be talking about a system that's even potentially better. Now, it's a little bit more expensive at $99, but I think it's going to be a whole lot better than this $1 little gadget. Why is tire pressure important anyway? Well, when we're on a motorcycle, we only have two tires to work with. If you're in a car, you have four tires, and if the tire pressure is low in one of those tires, you're still going to be able to drive safely, unless that tire is completely flat and then you run the risk of a blowout. But we just don't have that luxury in a motorcycle. So it's very important to maintain the proper tire pressures according to your owner's manual. If one of your tires is low, that can affect the handling and suspension of your motorcycle, which can make for a more dangerous ride. If you're mainly riding in a car, you're probably used to some kind of a tire pressure monitoring system. Now, it might not be a system where it tells you the exact pressure in every single tire, but most modern cars will give you an indicator if one of your tires is low, and then you can go out and figure it out. With a motorcycle, you might not get that luxury until you're buying the highest end motorcycle with the highest end electronics. That's why it might be important for you to check out an aftermarket tire pressure monitoring system. They're fairly inexpensive and it can keep you safe on the road. Everyone appreciates a little convenience in their lives. And I feel like we would check our tire pressures more often if it was easier to do so. I don't wanna go outside every morning, unscrew the valve stems, use this little thing and check the tire pressures every day. And I don't think you have to do that. Tire pressures don't change that often. But how would you know if you picked up a little slow leak after running over a nail or a screw? How would you know if the tire pressures changed rapidly overnight if it got cold all of a sudden? For that reason, I think it's important to have an electronic tire pressure monitoring system that can give you alerts if your tire pressure is low. This is the Fobo Bike 2, a completely wireless Bluetooth tire pressure monitoring system. And if you're interested in buying a system like this, I'll leave all the information and links in the description below. It can be purchased online. Now let's talk about some of those key features. The Fobo Bike 2 is a completely app-based system which connects via Bluetooth to your Apple or Android device. When you register, you connect your email address to your app, so if you lose your smartphone for any reason or change phones, you can still access your tire pressures. That also means that if your tire pressure monitors are stolen for whatever reason, whoever took them will not be able to use them since they're registered to your account. Before we get into the unboxing of the product, let me just show you how to set up the app. The first step is to make an account, which I already did. Now, let me show you how to add your motorcycle. You're gonna see the menu and it says add new, so you press that. Then you select the type of vehicle. It gives you the option of motorbike, bicycle, trike, all sorts of different things here. So I have a motorbike, let me press next. Then uh, you can make a profile name and I'm just gonna say Honda here. Done, click next and it's uploading it. And here's the tire pressures, recommended max. So my front tire here is recommended at 36. PSI, and it gives you an automatic min-max range for alerts, so I'll just keep that. Then click Save. Then the next is the rear tire, and that one is 42 PSI, so we'll get to 42, and then again, it gives you a min-max range. The max range is going to be higher because your tire obviously warms up and the pressure builds, so you don't want to be getting alerts all the time. So you save that, then you click Next again. You can put in your vehicle make, model, year, but I don't need to do that since I'm going to be registering one bike. And you can see here on the screen, it gives you a Honda, it shows the bike and the uh, front sensor and the rear sensor. So now let's unbox it and get these sensors set up. The system has some pretty cool features. It's waterproof, so you can ride it in the rain without worrying, has up to one year of battery life quoted, and you can change the battery yourself. So once it dies, you don't have to send the system out anywhere. These sensors are also very lightweight at 7.6 grams, so they shouldn't affect the balance of your tires. Let's see what's in here. So once you slide it out, you get a quick start guide here, which I'll walk through, so you don't really need to worry about that. A battery warning here, and these are the sensors themselves. There's two color options, silver and black. I went with silver for a little bit of color contrast, and you can see here just how small they are, about the size of a coin here. So we'll install one in the front, one in the rear, and then there's a little box with accessories in here. I'll just quickly show you what's in here. There's two wrenches for tightening the locking screws. There's a little keychain for putting the wrench on if you want to keep it on you. There's several tightening locking bolts. And then there's two additional valve stems, which I won't be using today, but it's nice that they're included. 
Before we start, let's get the pressure with this little gadget to see where we're at. So it is showing us right around 3940 PSI. Now that we have an idea of the pressure, let's get the sensor installed. The first thing I'm going to do is put on the little locking nut, and we're going to install it with the puffy side down so it can tighten against the sensor. Just make sure not to cross-thread it, and it goes on pretty easily here. So now that that's on, we have the sensor. We just follow up again, go gently, make sure not to cross-thread, and just hand tighten. And now we can take the little locking wrench and back the, the screw into the sensor here. So first I'll hand tighten it. Then you can put this on like this and go around. And now that sensor is secure. So that's done. Now we go back into our app, which is right here, and we install the rear sensor. So press here. We press proceed and we put it onto the sensor and it's scanning for it right now. So let's see if it picks it up the first time around. All right, and it is checking it, checking the details, saving. Perfect, so that is there. It's giving me a pressure of 36.7 PSI. If you remember, that little pen gave us a pressure of around 3940. So we'll use our little tire inflator to see which one of those is correct. Now let's move to the front tire. To speed things up, I'm gonna add the locking nut a little bit later. I'm just gonna screw on the sensor here, hand tighten, and again, go to the app and then put it next to it and press proceed. So it's scanning again. It's going to take a few seconds, so we'll speed this up. And checking sensor details, saving to cloud. Oh, look at that. It's alarming already, 29.7. So this tire is low. So we're going to use our pump to get these up to pressure and see how these sensors react. We have our pump connected. The app is showing a zero pressure in the front, which is correct because the sensor is off. You can see it right there. And the pump is also showing 30 PSI, which is concordant with what the app was showing. So we have it set to 36. Let's just get it going. So our pressure's at 36 now, so we're just gonna unscrew this real quick and put the sensor back on to see what we're at. I am hoping that it's accurate to 36 and we can move on to the back tire here. And again, all you have to do is put the sensor back on and since it's Bluetooth, it's gonna be connected to the app right away so there's no need to recalibrate or do anything like that. So the sensor is screwed on, hand tightened again. Give it a second to refresh here. So 10 seconds ago it was updated. So it should be 36. Look at that, beautiful, 35.8 front tire is in spec. Let's move to the back tire. We're at the back tire now and you can see that the pump is saying that it's a 37 PSI. If you remember, the pen was showing us 3940, so that pen is incorrect. And I guess it makes sense because it's only a dollar. So we're gonna pump this up to 42 right now and put the sensor back on and see if everything's in spec. Let's go. We're at 42 now, let's unscrew this and again put the sensor back on just to see how accurate we are in the app. I really do like this system because I've had systems before where you have to go outside and ride around just to get the pressures to measure, but this just puts on, you wait a little bit and the app auto updates. You don't have to do any riding and it can just tell you where you're at. So let's see here, it is still at zero. There we go, 41.9, doesn't get much closer than that. Everything's in spec, 36 in the front, 42 in the back. Really impressive stuff here. What makes the Fobo 2 a better system than the one I previously reviewed? And for your convenience, I brought the previous one with me to show you. The previous one has a standalone monitor, and from reading comments and different forums, some people really want the standalone monitor, but some people don't like the standalone monitor, especially when you're riding in bright light. If the light is shining from a certain angle, it washes out the tire pressures, and you might not see the indication on your screen. Another issue that I've run into is I ride a sport bike and there's just not very much room on the handlebars to mount the system. So if you put it here, it takes up all this space. Then if you want to mount an Insta360 or a GPS or a quad lock, ram mount, anything like that, there's just not a lot of real estate to work with. The great thing about the Fobo 2 is everything is on your phone and you're probably already riding with your phone anyway. You might be using GPS, you might be listening to music, your phone might be mounted on the handlebars anyway. And that's an easy way to see notifications if your tire pressure happens to be low. Or if you're starting your ride and are just curious if your tire pressures are within spec, you can just quickly check your phone, stick it in your pocket, and go. Another issue I've run into with this old system is if you run out of battery on the monitor, you have to remove it from your mount, bring it inside, charge it. If you forget to bring it back out and reinstall it, you're just not gonna know your tire pressures. 
The great thing about the Fobo 2, like I said, is it's seamless with your phone. As long as your phone is charged, you're gonna know your tire pressures. Also, this is a very sleek looking system. It's well constructed and it's accurate from our testing today. So if you're looking for an aftermarket TPMS, I highly recommend taking a look at the Fobo 2 system.